Hello, everyone. Um, objective of our time together is to understand energy efficient vehicles. As um, the whole world is transitioning towards clean energy, vehicles, because transportation is using a lot of energy and contributes to climate change, it's very important for us to understand the role it's, it plays. The main learning objectives were to understand that energy consumption in the transportation sector is very high. And the trend of energy use in transportation, not only in the US, but the whole world, is increasing as the world population increases. We'll go over the energy sources that are currently used in transportation. A very brief history of uh, electric vehicles, EV for short. We'll compare an uh, electric motor with an internal combustion engine motor vehicle. And uh, go over the five main components that you can find in an electric uh, vehicle and uh, an overview as to how it works the main advantages and disadvantages, and a brief uh, uh, overview of the future for electric vehicles. It is going to get very popular because it is uh, low emission. There's hardly any emission. And I know as a student, I'm sure most students like me would like to own a Tesla one day. Here is a illustration that shows that the transportation, so this is the total greenhouse gas emissions that is happening by sector in US. And the transportation sector is contributing 27%, which is very, very significant. You can see it's the highest sector for greenhouse gas emissions. And this emission is coming from the use of burning uh, because of burning fossil fuels in our cars and trucks and ships and trains, all modes of transportation. So over 90% of the fuel that we currently use are petroleum based, like uh, gasoline and diesel or, uh, you know, the distillates. So this picture clearly illustrates that the focus of the world should be in transportation. What are some of the common sources of energy that is used in transportation? You know, like you and I drive a car, you know, we know it's uh, gasoline, right? Uh, or diesel, that's the two options that we usually see in a gas station. And they are all uh, petroleum byproducts, which is fossil fuels. So that would be the first one that drives our cars and trucks uh, to, uh, in transportation. Distillate fuels that also come from fossil fuels are used in very large vehicles, boats and ships and trains. Jet fuel is used in uh, uh, aircrafts and helicopters. Residual fuel is used in ships. Uh, there is natural gas and propane, but they are mostly used in government operated vehicles. And these are the only two that uh, biofuels and electricity. So these are the only renewable sources of energy that we see that is uh, used in transportation. Usually biofuels are supplemented. That means added on to gasoline and diesel fuel. We've seen examples of how ethanol uh, can be added to gasoline. And now, uh, of course, the, the focus is on uh, using electricity to run vehicles because you can create electricity from solar energy and wind energy and so forth, which are renewable. And one of the uh, serious side effects you can see here is uh, the smoke and the smog and the, the particulate uh, substances. So if you are traveling in a crowded city like Bombay, Delhi, San Francisco, you can actually see the smog on the roads which is very harmful for human health. Among the 
uh, fuels that is used. This uh, graph is showing that most of the fossil fuel used uh, is coming from petroleum. And a very small percentage, like less than 5% is coming from re renewable energy, renewable fuels. Natural gas accounted for three, and electricity is less than 1% of the total transportation, which, you know, uh, uh, which has to be changed if we are going to go for a zero carbon economy very soon. So this is uh, how much of the transportation energy comes from biofuels. It is much higher in European countries. So you can see Sweden, 30% of their transportation energy is coming from renewable energy. And all these European countries, you can see it's uh, more than 5%. But in USA, it is less than 5%. So we, we do have a lot of catching up to do. In 2020, the total biofuel consumption accounted for only about 5% of the total US transportation energy. And uh, here's the air pollution and how it affects human health a lot. Uh, smog and soot will affect health of humans and the carbon dioxide emitted is contributing to the greenhouse, uh, greenhouse gases. On the road, we have both uh, on-road vehicles like you know cars and trucks and tr uh, motorcycles and there's non-road ones also like ships and aeroplanes, recreational vehicles, agriculture, uh, uh, locomotives and so forth. And here's, I, I like this picture. It's a summary of some of the things that human beings can do to reduce air pollution. Catalytic converters, you know, to uh, suck out the toxins from the tail pump, tailpipe exhaust before it's put in the air. That's a good idea. To increase the fuel standards. Uh, reduce exposure to pollutants, will reduce exposure to pollutants, fuel standards, so meaning more, we use more renewable energy, increasing uh, the efficiency of engines to and the transmission technologies, diesel filters. So these are all alternatives to uh, reduce uh, pollution. And then here we are for better transportation is the EV or electrically run vehicles, which are uh, environment friendly. So these are all like um, measures to reduce pollution if you use fossil fuels. But the best idea of course would be to uh, stop our dependence on fossil fuels for transportation. There's a lot here about uh, the history of electric vehicles. The first electric car was developed by Robert Anderson in 1832, and the battery was invented by Alessandro Volta. So this is very old. This is very old. See, the early 18th centuries, the primary modes of transport was like horses and uh, donkeys and buggies and so forth, right? And then the innovator, there was an innovator in Hungary, Netherlands. Uh, he created a very small electric car. 1817's electric car is uh, on the market and people are st starting to drive. But what has happened is even though electric car was discovered in the late 18th century, uh, it was not very efficient. And the, the combustion engine, you know, where, which uses fossil energy, uh, boomed. So what happened was the focus of the world shifted to the very cheap uh, fossil fuels then. So until the 1970s, the, it, the, there was no interest in hybrid cars because of very poor efficiency. But after the 1970s, when the energy crisis happened, again, the world started to focus on electric vehicles and more STEM uh, innovation happened to make it more efficient, to make its driving range higher so now it's, you know, it's like the talk of the town. Uh, every educated person wants to reduce their carbon footprint in the world. 
and they are trying to see if they can afford an EV. Uh, this uh, graph is also going over the brief history of the uh, electric vehicles. Even though it was discovered in the late 18th century, there was a crash in the market for it. And then 1970s, it picks up again. And then there is a boom. And there's so many government incentives pushing people to uh, consider uh, uh, EV vehicles, energy efficient vehicles. You know, BMW, Toyota, all these big companies, uh, Tesla is there. There's so many companies in India, in uh, Europe, uh, in China. This uh, picture is showing the five main components you can find in an electric uh, vehicle or an electric car here. It is running on electricity. So of course, it you can see an electric charger. The car is plugged into an electric charger. So the first thing is it needs a charging port. Most people who have electric cars, they have a charging port in their garage. And as soon as they come from work, they'll plug it in and they let it go like overnight. It's not too efficient, but it, it gets the job done. So the charging port will connect the charging station to the vehicle. The second component is called as an inverter, which converts the direct current into alternating current. The third one is called as an electric traction motor that connects that converts the AC into mechanical energy. So the science behind it is uh, electrical energy is converted to mechanical energy that will spin the wheels. The fourth one is an electric power station, and uh, this is the vehicle's engine and transmission uh, and so forth. The E is the battery source. So this is, you know, the most expensive part of the car. So overall, you can see that it is much simpler than a regular car. If you open the engine in a regular car, it, it seems super complicated, whereas this seems like a simple uh, machinery. How do electric uh, cars, uh, vehicles work? So this is an alternative design in automobile technology. So we are using electricity to power the car and the electricity has to come from a battery. The electric vehicle also will have a, a engine. Here it is an electric motor engine. So regular cars and trucks will have a combustion engine, right? Where you'll pour the gasoline and combustion actually happens that will move the pistons that are con that's connected to the wheels. So here electric energy is converted to mechanical energy that will roll the wheels. And the electricity is coming from a battery pack. So the most common ones are lead acid batteries. Lithium is the most common, however, lithium. There's other ones like molten salt, zinc air, or nickel-based des designs are also there. I thought this was very interesting. Uh, so this uh, public transportation, it's uh, charged by online electric vehicle charging systems. That means it is called inductive charging. Isn't that clever? So if you compare an uh, internal combustion engine, like which uses fossil fuels, to an uh, energy efficient electric vehicle, these cars, for example, Tesla, at least currently they are very expensive. So someone with a medium income uh, will, is, uh, will find it very hard to uh, afford a car like this because they run from like 35K to 50K and so forth in dollars. So it's very expensive because the batteries are expensive. However, the maintenance and the running cost, so after it runs like 50,000 miles, it is actually very cheap for the person who owns this car. And of course, the main reason to switch to electric vehicles is uh, pollution and uh, addressing uh, climate change. Uh, it is also, it can also run very smooth the ride is smooth and uh, it can accelerate very quickly. And uh, it's very, very quiet. So there are lots of advantages here. 
And here's a picture of the battery pack that electric uh, vehicles will operate. Uh, so the charging station will charge the electric pack. So this will power the motor and this can accelerate the car quickly. So here it's a combination of cells that are connected in parallel and in series, and they will con uh, convert chemical energy into electric energy. There is a diode with an anode and a cathode. So coming to charging, there are four different types of uh, scenarios shown. One is the conventional uh, uh, charging. So every time you run low on gas, you'll just stop in a gas station and add uh, gasoline, right? And like everyone is worried with the war and other things importing, uh, the prices of gasoline is increasing every day. There's hybrid cars that are powered by both engine and electric motor. So it's like half and half. Plug-in hybrid vehicles or all electric vehicles that is powered only by electricity. And uh, what type of engines they have and uh, what type of uh, pros and cons for each one of them is mentioned in this good graph table here. And uh, the all electric car is the most environmentally friendly. And here's uh, some pictures of different levels of charging stations. So this is uh, one of the drawbacks of electric cars is like you get very anxious when you are searching for a, a charging station and now the the, uh, our country has invested in a huge infrastructure shift to have charging stations, uh, make them as common as possible. So acceptance of any electric vehicle will depend on its uh, charging time and uh, vehicle acceptance rate. So some currently the cons of electric vehicles is uh, that the charging stations are fewer and further in between. So the driving range, when you say driving range, it is the distance your car, the EV can travel with one battery charge. So currently it's about 250 miles, which is very good. And of course, as they try to increase efficiency, you know, like Tesla, they say it can go up to 350 to even 500 miles on one charge. There are three different uh, uh, charging scenarios show here in 11, one is the one, domestic one, um, like where you use a, a electric car. So this is this takes overnight charging, sixteen hours, which is not looked at. Uh, it's not. It's a con. And here in level two, it takes three point five hours, and uh, this is the fastest one, the DC fast. It can charge in thirty minutes. And now there are several apps that will. Um, you can have you on your cell phone that will help you to find the closest uh, charging station. This is uh, also very interesting. That's showing how we can, uh, uh, solar energy is used in transportation. Here is a solar powered bike, solar powered aircraft and a ship. So both of these uh, went around, circumnavigated the world. And then we've seen uh, solar panels on international space stations. You know, NASA has been a leader on this and this has uh, been going on for decades now. And uh, this is, I thought was very interesting too, the Mercedes-Benz, uh, the, this is, it has a photovoltaic paint. So the car can make its own electricity. It's a hybrid car. So all these solar um, uh, vehicles, um, are environmentally friendly. So they will use photovoltaic cells and solar panels to convert the uh, solar energy into electrical energy to drive the vehicle. So as we discussed a little bit before, uh, there are several advantages. See like the efficiency of uh, electric vehicle is 90%. Whereas if you convert our regular car, it's only 20 to 30%. Most of the energy is lost as heat in a car. And it's high efficiency and reduced emissions. So it's very environmentally friendly. There's hardly anything coming out of the exhaust. 
low maintenance. So in the long run, you can save money with it. Quick acceleration and it runs quiet. And now there's more and more uh, charging stations in place. So the disadvantage, just like most of the renewable energy uh, we've studied is the initial cost. Can you afford it? And the battery charging takes time overnight for uh, uh, resident, like for driving to work, car that drives to work and not sufficient charging stations. This is a, a, tape, a picture that shows the economic benefits, how in the long run using an electric vehicle is more, can save you money. For the government, the benefits are tremendous because we are reducing our dependence on uh, imported fossil fuels. And we are shifting the consumption away towards uh, using local electricity. And there are many papers that show the, the grid in USA, especially in United States, is powerful enough to charge all our cars also. And now there's so much innovation going into uh, increasing the battery longevity and the, drive, uh, charge, the driving range of the cars. For example, Tesla Model S cost only three cents, 3.7 cents a mile. And a full charge will cost only $50, $15. And here the picture on the left, uh, it is showing about energy consumption. So for a, a, a family, you can see that the energy consumption, so they're spending about $250 uh, for both the gasoline and for electric electricity in the house. So when you use a hybrid or a fully electric vehicle, you have to plug in, right? So it does use electricity, but it's not as much. So you can see the, the money saving uh, uh, nature of electric vehicles, low maintenance, and it can last, the batteries can last up to 20 years, 15 to 20 years. And now there's so many grants and rebates and tax credits by the government. They're trying to push the uh, switch to EVs. Uh, electric rate is more stable compared to gasoline rates. It is cheaper to charge than to fill a tank. Electric cars are becoming more and more uh, affordable to regular people. Uh, there's also roads like uh, with reduced uh, tolls if you're using an EV car. And also there's fast lanes that, are, uh, that can be used if you're driving an electric vehicle. And it also comes with long battery warranties. So it, the, it is very attractive to buy an electric vehicle in current times. So here's a forecast for uh, 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 elect vehicles, electric vehicles. So you can see as, as the population increases, as the demand uh, for transportation vehicles increases, there is this accelerated demand for electric vehicles here. EV sales is expected to grow and improve by 30% by 2030. And it's already, you can see it happening in other parts of the world, like uh, see China, Germany, US, UK, they are ahead with uh, small cars, electric cars on their roads. So what is the future of electric cars? Uh, so in this picture, the current situation in US is that less than 1% of the cars, approximately 250 million vehicles are uh, environmentally friendly. And there is a very strong push and support by the, the local citizens. So the acceptance rate is very, very high. And it many, uh, research has shown that the American grid, electric grid, can handle the switch from a combustion engine to an electric motor engine. So when the new uh, president came into power in 2021, the Congress passed the bipartisan infrastructure deal. 
So here they have promised to replace the government vehicles with EVs, school buses, a part of the school buses. And then this is the heavy uh, investing part to build a network of electric vehicle charges all across the country. So this switch will happen very soon in the next 10 years, all towards uh, creating a carbon-free economy. However, as the demand for electric vehicles increases, you can, all, you can almost say that the demand for battery, like uh, lithium nickel batteries and copper, so all these raw materials, um, uh, they, you can expect a shortage happening in them. And I hope that was helpful. <laughs>